Thanks for staying with us. Now, according to a report by McKenzie and Company, one of the um, one of Africa's largest e-commerce sales platform could hit $75 billion per year by 2025, with Africa's surging population and untapped economic potential. All this could be bought well, um, could bode well rather for this e-commerce platform. Now, e-commerce is not unprofitable because of poor um, management or low cons consumer interest in Africa. Rather, the infrastructural problem always gets in the way of growth. Now, in other words, many countries in African region do not necessarily have the infrastructure to bring the e-commerce business to greater heights. Now, statistics, however, has shown that women are the highest users of e-commerce platforms. Why is this so? And what is the impact on the African economy? Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 So, e commerce. First of all, amongst us here, how many of us use um, e commerce platforms for transactions? Do you? <laughs> I don't. I or you're the traditional, I have to go and. <laughs> I see face to face. <laughs> for you to get me to do things like that, then I have to tell Oga, please do the transfer. I, this is what I want, this is what I want. Uh huh. And I pay him. Okay. That's How it. about you, Jennifer? All the time. Okay. So tell I'm too us. lazy to enter market. Sorry, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> no, enjoy. <laughs> I mean, it is so seamless. Okay. Mm. Aside the fact that, you know, some vendors mm. will scam you and all of that, but it is still seamless. You mm. see what you want online, you put it in your cart, you pay for it, you check out. And in the next few days, your items it's are delivered. there. Mm. So it's either you're buying from Nigeria or you're buying from UK or from mm. China or from US and it's being delivered to you. I mean, I just have another access point where I get my goods from. So it works for me. I'm not going to the market though, but yeah. you know, I can tell, I can pick what I want, mm. then tell it to uncle. You are not, you are not part of the customer <laughs> that I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> so my interaction with online, well, it's it's half and half, you know, because I've I've done some orders online too. Today I've not seen the order, and it's exactly. a big platform, global platform. I, in fact, I don't even know how to go and report the matter. It was just maybe like sixty dollars or something. Okay. But I just, you know what? Let me just like I, I, like I can't I even stress myself. Like I might know that platform. Like <laughs> like I was so upset, you know. You know, up till now, they've not even sent email, oh, what happened to the order, nothing. But you know what, I, I, I couldn't be bothered, you know. So it's, it's a 50-50 thing for me. And, you know, for some other platforms that I have, um, I, I have tried to do business with, yeah. I wasn't 100% satisfied with, with what eventually I saw compared to what mm. I saw online. online. So exactly. there's still that big, you know, that big challenge that people are worried about e-commerce. Mm. But the truth is that, I mean, COVID-19 2020 taught us that, um, e-commerce is the future there's really nothing we can do mm. i mean right now i think it's even like you rightly said mm. i mean it's convenient right now mm -hmm. you sit in the comfort of your home you just order everything you want to order and you mm. can transact business globally exactly. right you can transact business globally so it is easier to actually you know what so you can become a global citizen right where you are because yeah. you're able to do business with people all over the world exactly. i mean that is what e does that um, leverage that e-commerce gives to, to us you. you know but i don't know how much the um, impact it's it's uh, it's had on the African economy, and you know, like you know, the involvement of women in e-commerce um, businesses and how is how is building, you know, because some women are not just um, uh, what's it called um, customers; they are vendors. They are yeah, they're sellers. Sellers, sellers on the platforms. Yes. yes. Yeah, you're going to say something. Yes, I was going to say that um, I can give you figures or percentages, but I know that currently a lot of businesses are actually going online. I have a friend who has a, a business. She had to build her site and, you know, do e uh, the e-commerce uh, site yeah, the interaction, so that she yeah, should be able to get um, individuals come in to pay yeah. um, and purchase their goods as well. And she's also doing this in such a way that you are able to, you can be the buyer and you can get your sellers mm. in that platform without you having to source for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just for them to be able to be, they, they, once they're interested in the, the, the product you have online or whoever is selling online, they can come in and buy. You know, so it, I think um, not just um, the men, but the women are also doing what they need to do. So, mm. and it's not just in Nigeria. You can buy from wherever you 
are um, from where, whatever country you are um, uh, you want to purchase absolutely. or sell from. Absolutely. Right, so let me bring in our guest. Mm. <laughs> let me help you because <laughs> we are not the expert. We are, we are here to learn. Here to all right. Learn. So after growing up in Mali. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and working all over the world for companies like PwC mm -hmm. or Alstom, Mul Mulai, Mulai. Yes, <laughs> now <laughs> dedicates his experience to African culture mm -hmm. as the co-founder and CEO of Africa. Mm -hmm. And thanks to that, Africa.com now pro um, processes about $10 million plus of transactions in 150 countries. Obsessed with service and operational excellence, Mulai, Mulai is convinced <laughs> that distribution through the web is the key to Africa's future. And this culture, as Africa's only unlimited and growing resource, is the link between the largest diaspora in the world. And he's joined us live from Ivory Coast. Thank you so much. I've been murdering your name. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mulai, for joining us this evening. All right, so... We're talking e-commerce and the, um, the role of women in e-commerce business in Africa and how much impact is, is had on the African economy. Maybe you should just give us an, a general overview because I went on your website, quite interesting. I saw very beautiful African stuff, you know, and I hear that your vendors are, um, a, your, the percentage of women are much more than the male man. vendors on your platform. So maybe you should give us a bit of an um, overview of the impact of e-commerce, you know, in businesses across Africa. Sure, uh, I can start with speaking for AfriCrea.com. So for us already, uh, we have over 7,000 sellers on our platform all over the world and in 50 of the 54 African countries. So it's a global business with a big Pan-African presence. Yeah. And uh, in, big, in this big Pan-African presence, 9 out of 10 sellers are women. Mm. So definitely uh, we are mainly supporting women entrepreneurs uh, selling globally. Wow. So what does this mean for the woman, you know? What does this um, impact mean for the woman? Oh, there is several impact. Uh, I can give you a lot of different stories. I can give you the stories of La Falaise Dion, that a lot of people maybe might know, because she was worn by Beyonce. So you can see clothing uh, with Corys that Beyonce used to wear in a, in a clip mm -hmm. recently. I think it's The Lion King. Yes. I think she wore Corys, if you remember, right? The lady, the young lady that made it is uh, very young. She was a student at the time and still working two jobs to survive and actually be able to continue study. But she loved and always loved the story behind uh, historical usage of coins mm -hmm. in Africa and in Ivory Coast. Yeah. And thanks to it, not only was she able to get discovered by Beyonce and war in a clip, but she sold in hundreds of countries around the world and she's now living out of it and supporting dozens of tailors working for her to make the, 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 the actual jewelry for clients all over the world. Absolutely. So what That's one story. Okay. <laughs> you, can go, you can give us another story. <laughs> That's an interesting story, though. There's 7,000 of them, so it's, okay. it, it just, you just have to choose. But mainly what I can say is that uh, uh, for women, it's a story of autonomy. First, it's to be able to be independent. Uh, mm -hmm. A story also of pushing forward uh, mm -hmm. a different narrative because People think about a lot about how can Africa present itself differently, and I think that women have that in common is that people don't take them seriously first. But when they prove by the sales, by the experience they create, people have to look up and finally realize how good they can do and how well they can execute. So definitely, I think it's it's a story of autonomy, independence, but a lot of story also of uh, fighting against the known agenda and how people see them. Okay, so, um, um, hi Malai. One thing that actually struck me with uh, all you've talked about is uh, the fact that it's interesting, it's um, fun, you know, it's um, borderless for people to be able to do businesses. But what about the challenges? How, how has the challenges mm -hmm. been in this space, especially in Africa? Um, there is a lot of them. Like you mentioned before, uh, I was listening to you. There was the, inf the, the first one is the infrastructure challenge, mm -hmm. the big one, the one that makes people don't even try because they don't know how to ship. They don't know how to get paid if they sell outside, especially in Nigeria with the different issues you have with CBN controls recently. But we, Africa, for example, provide a solution for people to ship from Nigeria to anywhere in the world, from your home, without moving, 
for less than twenty dollars to the US or to the UK. Wow. Sorry. That's an example of something that can. Mulai, can you come yes. back again? Do you still hear me? Sorry, I lost you for a second. Yes, sorry. So you said you you no were problem. able. To, yeah. <laughs> Go come back again when you were talking about you're able to ship from your house to any part of the world in Nigeria. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, you can now ship with DHL, so in two to three days, for less than thirty dollars to uh, the US or UK, uh, up to two kg uh, using our services. Really? Where have yes. you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's an example of the infrastructure solution we found because the first one was how can people ship without losing money? Because mm. if it's too expensive or too painful, they won't even have a lot of orders. So mm. we made it easy from your home. You can call DHL to pick up and inexpensive too. Mm. So that's a first solution. And getting paid is another solution uh, that we are working on. Uh, for example, now we have a visa card uh, for people that are selling online. So you can send a link to someone on WhatsApp, for example, mm -hmm. to pay you something or, or on Instagram, like, like a lot of Nigerian sellers do. Mm -hmm. And we draw that money using an ATM, an ATM using a card right away. Absolutely. Jennifer, you have a question? <laughs> okay. I was going to ask you, uh, because when I went on your website, I saw a lot of, um, um, what's it called, fabric, fashion businesses and all of that. Why is it that we have more women you know, running e-commerce businesses. Why is the statistics more in, in, in terms of um, demographic that is more on the women's side? Um, there is plenty of explanation. Um, there is the, I might say, what people call the accidental explanation. I might say it's, uh, people often say that a woman gets first on e-commerce because as entrepreneurs, they are looking forward in terms of consumption. They look globally, they use social media more than men most of the time, especially on the fashion realm. But there is, I think, the most important reason for me why e-commerce is predominantly dominated by women is also because e-commerce is about service, hmm. mainly. You have to, to, to be okay to uh, know what are the details of a good experience. Mm -hmm. I hear from, uh, from Issa's experience that people are always afraid, so you have to create trust. Exactly. Also, mm -hmm. something yeah, that is naturally something that women has to, uh, unfortunately most of women have to do most of their life often because people don't trust them people assume things about them and i think this experience in this kind of trauma is something that is turning into an asset when you do e-commerce you are the best equipped to do an incredible service and to innovate when you are to innovate and serve other people so what um so what they, there is a saying that uh, goes when you train a woman you train a village Okay, so what, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So um, in Africa, we believe in our women, and we know that they can do the unthinkable because um, they are very, very zealous mm -hmm. when it, and industrious as well. So, um, uh, do you think we have given the women enough grounds to actually be trained in e-commerce in Africa? Uh, to answer your question quickly, no, I don't think we we have done enough, and uh, I believe that's the loss of uh, whole of the whole countries and the whole communities when we don't do that. Because like you said, and I think Jennifer talked about it a few minutes ago when she said all that she had to do in her day. And she said that by default, all the, everything we do, especially as Nigerian, we do it for our family. And I think mm. it's the same thing in Mali. Exactly. So even more when you're a woman, you generally support a whole community behind mm -hmm. you. And so when you train someone like that, you don't, you don't only give money to one person, you actually give the training ability to someone that is going to afterwards raise a generation. So exactly. definitely uh, there is not enough being done. We do what we can, because when someone creates a shop on our platform on africa.com, we train them the best we can. We try to coach them to their reality in their countries and to the reality in the global markets. But I still believe that this is something that uh, for the success of our countries, we need to do more. Okay, so why did you even decide decided to you know go into Africa.com? I mean, in the first place, why did you decide to start that business? Because I see that you're empowering a lot of women, you know, through your platform. Why was this? Yeah. Uh, initially, it was uh, because I was frustrated by the fact that uh, I don't know if you know the platform Etsy in the US. No. Uh, it's a, it's a platform for e-commerce. It's an e-commerce platform from do-it-yourself, you know, things made at home. 
So mostly by women again in the US, and they are doing now $6 billion a year of sales. And I could not understand how come uh, in the US they could do this much volume from their home, when in Africa I was seeing talented people all over, me, all over the place, craftsmen with years of experience or women with incredible sense of style, not being able to sell worldwide. Mm. It, couldn't, it didn't make sense when you look at the numbers and the reality that we could not take our share of the global markets, especially when we are the most stylish on social media, mm -hmm. the most copied by brands, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. You cannot stay like that. You have to do something about it. Um, okay, so for now for new or for people who actually want to join your e-commerce platform, how seamless is it for them? Mm -hmm. What are the steps they need to take for them to actually get on board to you, on your platform? Yes, uh, it's first it's free to, to join. Uh, if you want to start selling, it's free. So you just need pictures of your products and the price of them. So you put them on the platform. You don't even need to talk to me or to anyone in the company. You just go on africa.com. You have a link to create my shop and you create your, your, your link in and in 20 minutes, your shop is up. So it's completely wow. seamless, frictionless, and it's free. What happens afterwards is if you want to use our services to ship, to get paid, you just have a subscription monthly of $10 and that's it. Okay, wow. are there specific, um, specifics to Product. the kind of products yeah. or the kind of um, pictures that you have to upload? Because I mean, people like me, I am very detailed and most people buy things based on what they've seen. So if the pictures are not exactly clear or your products are not looking so good, I won't be patronizing you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And you are, you're, you're right to do so. And uh, that's most of the clients online. So because what you see is what you get, at least. Sometimes it's not even that, but at least. Uh, so the efforts has to be done on the pictures. But I believe that's something that is incremental. I believe uh, anyone can start and you can improve as you do. Some people have an eye for it and they are, I might say, God-given talent that uh, I'm happy to see transform in actual dollars when they sell online. So it's really a matter of the scope. A everyone can try. And our job is to actually train and coach, like I said earlier, the one that do not know that a picture is first about lightning. You have to have enough light to actually appreciate the picture. It's about styling. It's about who is your client. How does she dress? What does she want to represent? And so it's a lot of different things that are behind the picture, but our job is to train people to uh, learn to do it if they don't have it naturally. Okay, so, so everyone can try, okay. yeah, and we can help afterwards. Okay, so I know your business has come um, so far. Um, my question is, um, in time past, what are the issues that you've had between vendors and customers? And how were they oh. resolved? <laughs> Um, most of the issues are generally issues of communication, I'll be honest. Uh, that's the first thing that I want to say from the African vendors I have mainly. There is rarely issues on the product itself. The quality is generally good. Uh, there is very little, people assume that there is a lot of fraud, but there is not. Most of the products, when they're ordered, arrive without issues. What generally happens is in the communication. Because uh, people, mainly for Africa, have so much, and especially women, have so much to do in one day, including selling, that sometimes uh, some messages can go over the crack and people are missing, for example, information for two or three days without knowing where are the orders and where are the packages. Mm -hmm. So that's the critical point generally in terms of uh, experience of selling online. Uh, and I think also another example you gave is, for example, someone that did not receive anything but is not getting any news. Hmm. So it's mainly communication. I think the biggest problem that, at least the numbers speak, I think it's around 40% of our issues on orders are issues of updates. Hmm. Okay, but I was just going to... Oh, sorry, Mulai. I was going to ask that, you know, yeah, that communication has always been a problem. People don't respond to messages because messages can fly over your head. But what about the quality check? Do you check the products to be sure that what you are putting on your platform for your integrity's sake, it is, is it's quality enough to be able to go to any consumer? Um, yes. To answer your question, we don't check any product. Like I explained earlier, it's to allow anyone to try. We cannot check everyone because we have over 100,000 products on the platform. Mm. But what we do is ensure that we keep the funds. 
So when someone orders to a seller uh, for at least his first 10 or 20 orders, we keep the funds. Okay. So we let the seller know we have the funds in your wallet. They are available. We kept it so you, are, you know the person has paid. But you can only withdraw the money when the when buyer the has received satisfied. the money. satisfied. Fantastic. Okay. We're going to go on a very short break. When we return, we'll continue this interesting conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.